Today we'll be tackling the last and arguably most dynamic data structure in our Introduction to Data Structure series, the graph. We'll begin with a short exercise to help visualize what graphs are before diving into the specifics of what a graph entails at its most basic form. We'll then jump into the properties of graphs, first talking about directed versus undirected, then cyclic versus acyclic, and finally the practice of weighting graphs. Next, we'll talk about how those properties combine to form different graph types, before finally talking about some of the real-world implementations of those types of graphs. As this is the last episode in our series, I would recommend getting caught up before we start. You can do this using the Introduction to Data Structures playlist, which is linked in the top right corner of your screen, as well as the link in the description below. If anything, I'd watch our episodes on linked lists and trees, as a lot of that knowledge overlaps with today's discussion. So before we get into the nitty gritty details, I want to do a short little exercise. Visualize for a second a few of your favorite places to eat on a map around your town. For me personally, it'd be Five Guys, Chick-fil-A, Panera, Wawa, and Domino's. Now imagine for a second that you are ravished, absolutely starving. And so your plan is obviously to drive around to each of your favorite places to eat and order an ungodly amount of food from each location. Each food location has a few possible paths going to and from it, obviously, and so we add those to the map as well. Now, you can see it kind of looks like a network of delicious foods. We can start anywhere, and all we have to do is make sure to hit all five locations. You may not know it, but what we've done here is set up a simple graph in your mind, or if you're following along with my example, on the screen. Essentially, graphs are composed of pieces of information and the paths that run between them. More specifically, by definition, they are a nonlinear data structure consisting of nodes and edges. There are a finite set of these nodes, also called vertices, which are connected by the edges. Nodes and edges should be familiar to you if you watched the episode on trees. The big difference between trees and graphs, however, is that with the tree, we had a specific starting point. Sure, there were multiple paths down the tree that branched off, but you always had to start at the root node. In contrast, with a graph, there is no specified starting point. We can begin from any node and traverse to any node that has an edge connecting them, just like how in our food example we were able to start at any restaurant. Graphs are a huge concept and often escape the bounds of computer science, being used in many places you wouldn't even think of, which you will see later on. Before we get into anything too crazy though, like the difference between directed and undirected graphs or acyclic versus cyclical graphs, Let's get the basics down. Now every graph is composed of these nodes or vertices and the edges that connect them. Let's pull up a sample graph and talk about it. Now we represent graphs visually like this a lot because it makes it way easier to understand. But notation wise, a graph actually looks like this, which is much harder to visualize. So let's break it down. First, we have the vertices set, which contains a comma separated list of all vertices within the graph. Each comma-separated value represents a node within the graph. Then we have the edge set, which is a little bit more complicated. Each element of the edge set is an ordered pair which describes a relationship between nodes. For example, the first one describes a relationship between the six and four nodes. The fifth indicates a relationship between the five and two nodes, and so on. Using these two sets, we're able to build our graph pretty easily by laying down both the information and the connections that fall between them. One final thing I want to mention about the basics of graphs is about the relationships that occur between two nodes. If we have a particular edge which connects two different vertices, they are known as adjacent to one another. So, for example, the five nodes would be adjacent to the four, two, and one nodes. All right, now that we have the basics down, we can jump into the different attributes that a particular graph can have, starting with directed versus undirected. An undirected graph is one in which the direction you traverse the nodes isn't important. This is usually indicated by a lack of arrows pointing to specific nodes. Such was the case with our first example graph, or even the food example from the beginning of the episode. We can hop between nodes or even back and forth between them without problems. A good way to visualize undirected graphs is like a network of friends on Facebook. 
where each edge indicates a friendship. Because of the fact that when somebody accepts to be your friend on Facebook, you are both added to each other's friends list, the friendship goes both ways and direction is unimportant, as you are both friends of one another. In contrast, a directed graph is one in which the direction you traverse the nodes is important. This is usually indicated by arrows representing which nodes a certain node can traverse to. The edges could point both ways, but they don't necessarily have to. It's very possible the edge only points one way. A good way to visualize directed graphs is by thinking of them as a network of friends on Instagram. Sure, I can follow famous celebrity Will Smith, but the odds that he follows me back? Fairly low, and so in that case the relationship would only go one way. Undirected and directed graphs both have their uses, as we learned with the social media example. Both provide different functionality which will be useful to you in your computer science journey, just like the next type of property a graph can have, either cyclic or acyclic. A cyclical graph is one which contains a path from at least one node back to itself. So you can see by the example on your screen now that the 4 node leads to the 3 node, which then leads to the 2 node, which finally leads back to the 4 node, forming a cycle. A small thing to note here is that all undirected graphs end up being cyclical. This is because the bidirectional nature of the nodes within undirected graphs theoretically forms a cycle between any two nodes. So judging by that logic, all undirected graphs are cyclical. An acyclical graph is one which contains no path from any one node which leads back in on itself. This property can really only apply to undirected graphs like we mentioned previously. What this basically means is that for any given node there is no path which will eventually lead back to itself. The last property I want to mention actually applies to the edges of a graph instead of the nodes, and is known as weighting. Weighting the edges on a graph essentially means associating a numerical value with each edge. Often called the cost of that edge, each weight represents some property of the information you're trying to convey. For example, again going back to our food example, since the information we're trying to convey is a good route which takes us to each location, a good weight for our edges in that scenario could be the distance between nodes. This comes in handy a lot especially with navigation, such as the case with our food example, as we of course always want to find the path of least cost or weight between the different nodes. So there are the major properties of a heap that the different nodes and edges can have. Combining them leaves us with the following, a cyclical undirected heap, a cyclical directed heap, and an acyclical directed heap. And then of course, all of these could also have weights added to their edges for added functionality, leaving us with six different types of graphs. It would take a while to talk about each of these and their implementations, so I'll just pick out three that have the most common or popular uses in computer science. Probably the most famous implementation of the heap data structure is through the undirected cyclical heap with weighted edges. This is through its use in Dijkstra's shortest path algorithm. This algorithm, given a graph and a source vertex within that graph, compiles a list of the shortest possible paths from that source vertex to all other nodes within the graph. As you might be able to tell just from its description, this has a multitude of uses across the entire tech world. Google uses this algorithm for Google Maps, it's used in the process of IP routing and can even be implemented in telephone networks. Another type of graph which you probably use quite often is the unweighted cyclical graphs, both undirected and directed, as these make up the follower system of a majority of social media websites. We already talked about these in the case of Facebook, which would use cyclical representations, as well as Instagram, which would use an acyclical representation. However, this example encompasses many more social media platforms other than those two. Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok even. All of these platforms through which you have an account can represent your follower following base through a graph, and oftentimes do. Facebook even has a graph API which you can use to interact with the graphs that they use to make up each user's web of friends.
As you can see, graphs and their many different forms provide much of the functionality you interact with in everyday life, contributing to almost any facet of the internet. And with that concludes our discussion on graphs. As a review, a graph is a data structure which is represented by a set of nodes and edges, which come together to form a visualization of data. Whether that data be food locations on a map, friends on social media, or IP addresses on your computer, the different types of graphs provide a multitude of implementations in computer science. And with that concludes our introduction to data structure series. After three months and 13 episodes totaling almost three hours, you should now have the basic knowledge on data structures to take with you as you continue along your computer science journey. As for what's next, well, over the next few weeks, I'll be refining, combining, and reworking the sections of these videos into one long mega cut, which will include new content as well as refined older content, so stay tuned for that. Now, the combined content for the mega cut is 57 pages long and 1700 visuals long compared to 43 pages and 800 visuals for introduction to programming. So please stay patient over the next few weeks as I get that video ready for you. And if you made it this far and watched the entire series, thank you tremendously for watching.